Deepti Kalon joins me on the set today for today's press review. Hi, Deepti. Hi, Jeannie. You're starting in Mexico with the murder of a fourth journalist so far this year. That's right. We just spoke about the murder of the thir that third journalist just last week on the press review. Uh, now the shooting death of Roberto Toledo, a Mexican journalist gunned down outside his office, has brought that uh, toll uh, up to four in just the first month of 2022. The publication for whom he worked said that essentially exposing corruption had led to the death of their colleague. The Spanish paper here, El País, noting that the Mexican government continues to um, draw outrage, really, for its failure, perceived failure, to protect journalists. In fact, Mex Mexico now has become the most dangerous country in the world for journalists to practice in. Uh, Toledo is uh, the fourth death uh, in 2022. And like the journalists uh, killed before him, he also had reported death threats made against him, in particular after he reported on a corruption case involving a regional prosecutor that's in the Mexican um, website Publimetro. Moving on now to tensions between Mali and France. Now that's over the expulsion of the French ambassador to Mali. Well, that expulsion coming after the French foreign minister, um, Jean-Yves Le Drian, last week condemned Mali's ruling military government as illegitimate. Uh, for this website, Wakat Sarah, a West African news website, all bets are off. Nothing is working anymore in this relationship between France and Mali, uh, the, this article says. The website even wondering if France has reached the, quote, point of no return. Uh, the Malian military leaders are determined to hold their own to a France which operates in its own, quote, bubble of arrogance. Meanwhile, Malian military leaders seem to, quote, refuse to believe in the benefits of dialogue. So there's really a standoff here. Uh, and both sides are leaving the country wide open to terrorists. The news website Lugeli perhaps sums it up best. Both parties are guilty and no one is innocent in this diplomatic saga. All right, also making headlines today, Dipti, Israel's decision to leak an Amnesty International report accusing it of apartheid against Palestinians. Yeah, uh, Amnesty International were due to release that 211-page report this Tuesday, essentially labeling uh, Israel an apartheid state for its treatment of Palestinians. However, the Israeli government leaked it first in a visible attempt to sort of get the first word in, Jeannie, as the Jerusalem Post reports on its front page, rather accusing the Amnesty International of denying Israel Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state. Uh, pretty much the same opinion uh, you will find in the Wall Street Journal as well, which lashes out at uh, Amnesty, uh, accusing them of um, basically being partners with Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran uh, against Israel. I quote, the report deserves condemnation for its bias and its lack of understanding about why Israel survives amid hostile neighbors. All right, just to wrap up now, the press is still having a field day with Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson hanging on to his leadership by a hair after that damning inquiry into parties that he allegedly held at Downing Street during the height of the lockdown. Well, the British Prime Minister did issue a groveling apology for the way he's run office. He is holding on to all, with all he's got to the leadership, this despite calls to quit, despite overwhelming evidence of those parties, and despite this report by senior civil servant Sue Gray. For City AM, um, it's sort of a political hangover for Boris Johnson and it will continue for several weeks because the Met has now launched an investigation into 12 different Downing Street parties. Kudos to the Daily Star today, Jeannie. They have a fantastic front page, Fifty Shades of Grey. Ooh, that's Bo good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I bet they were waiting for that one. <laughs> Bozo getting a political spanking in this brutal new report by, uh, by Sue Grey. Add salt to injury, the paper says. He also got a big kick in his nuts by predecessor <laughs> Theresa May. I bet they had fun with that one. All right, Dipti, thanks so much for that. Dipti Colon, with your look at the press review.